Guillermo del Toro's already got a list of directors he'd love to work with for season two of Cabinet of Curiosities. The Oscar-winning director carefully directed the eight-part Netflix series, a collection of stories he chose. Different gothic and naturalistic horror styles are used in the standalone episodes, showing each director's hand. In this video, we'll discuss Guillermo del Toro's wish list for season two and seven crazy moments from the show. First off, Guillermo del Toro's already got a list of directors. We might not have a schedule for the filming of season two, but it looks like del Toro's already manifesting the season. Even though it hasn't been picked up yet, del Toro shared a list of directors he'd like to see in season two of Cabinet of Curiosities. He said he wanted Jairo Bustamante, who directed Iskanul, and Issa Lopez, who directed True Detective. Del Toro also mentioned Sorry to Bother You director Boots Riley and horror veteran Larry Fessenden. The director said they had tried to get Jairo Bustamante before, but couldn't because of COVID, and that the True Detective director was already supposed to do one of the first season's episodes, but she couldn't. Del Toro plans to have Boots Riley write and direct one of the episodes. That's not all, though. Del Toro teased that he's holding on to spoilers for the second season. When he was talking about the next season's structure, Guillermo Del Toro said he'd just like to write the first and last episodes. He plans to have someone else write the stories in the middle. The ultimate goal is to find stories that haven't been told yet. He also mentioned that he adapted the autopsy because it was one of his favorite stories. Up next, will we get a second season for the show. Because Del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosity came out at an unusual time, it's hard to tell how well it did right away. All eight episodes came out every night, with two episodes leading up to the finale. This is a bit different from what Netflix usually does. So far, we found out that the anthology debuted at number three on Netflix's streaming charts, with 50 hours of viewing in its first six days. Episodes of the show usually last an hour, and since Netflix likes to talk about something other than specific numbers and metrics, it's hard to know what would be considered a success. There may be another reason though followed by, low views might not be a problem for the show. Netflix may find it helpful to keep working with a director like Del Toro even if the number of viewers is lower than expected. Cabinet of Curiosities is an authentic collection of short stories with only a general theme linking them together. When the project came out, it was met with mostly positive reviews, which got a lot of attention initially, along with other things that might be enough to justify a second part. Boots Riley will be a great choice if it does happen. Like Sorry to Bother You, the director's work has a strong social critique. If Guillermo Del Toro Toro's Cabinet of Curiosity gets a second season, it would be interesting to see what Riley and other directors bring to the table. From what he said, it sounds like Del Toro already has some ideas about how he wants it to go. Moving on to how the different directors executed the first season. Every director's touch makes ghosts, amphibian men, and other creatures look and move stunningly. Most of the time, the people are the ones to watch out for. What's more exciting is the talent of the other people involved. Guillermo Navarro, who has worked as Del Toro's cinematographer, is a first-time director. He's done important film work as Del Toro's cinematographer. Panos Cosmatos and Vincenzo Natale are two directors who've done some strange things. That's not all though. Even Catherine Hardwick changed Little Red Riding Hood and a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. As Del Toro's cinematographer, Navarro's taken many beautiful and scary pictures. Inside the orphanage, Carlos had to deal with a monster who looks like a person and a ghost who looks scary. To get the feel of gothic horror instead of foggy castles, there are blue lit nights, rainstorms, and scary shadows. For curiosity, Navarro directs the second of two original works by Del Toro. This is the second time these two artists have worked together. Now let's look at seven crazy moments from the show. The the stories from the show are very different in style and theme, but most of them have at least one scene that shocked us so much that it stuck with us long after the credits rolled. Years after his first movie, 1995's Cube, and a great Netflix original horror movie called In the Tall Grass, the second episode of Cabinet of Curiosity shows that Vincenzo Natale is a master of claustrophobic horror. It also shows that he has a knack for creature features. After grave robber Masson finds that rats have stolen his most valuable loot, he crawls through a network of tunnels under the cemetery to get back. He also learns that he isn't the biggest living thing there. If being stuck underground wasn't scary enough, things get scary when you find the rat's huge, man-eating mother with enormous wings. Not to mention when Winters destroyed his sensory organs in the autopsy. The autopsy might be the best episode of Cabinet of Curiosities so far. It was directed by David Pryor, known for directing the underrated and underseen movie The Empty Man. Oscar winner F. Murray Abraham plays Winters, who's dying of cancer. He looks at the victims of a strange mining accident and find some tragic news. He discovers that a parasitic extraterrestrial possesses Luke Robert with no sense organs and wants to use him as his next host. 
Before the alien finishes the transference, the coroner figures out a creepy way to stop it from using his body to harm. He makes himself blind and deaf by cutting his eardrums and his eyes. It was one of the most horrifying and graphic moments of the show. Let's learn about when Stacy was intimate with Aloe Glow's humanoid form. In the fourth episode of The Outside, Stacy's the perfect example of someone who doesn't like their own skin. She uses a popular moisturizer called Aloe Glow to destroy it so she can look more like her mean co-workers. She doesn't realize that this miracle product which is giving her a horrible rash, has a mind of its own until she sees that it has taken the shape of a person. When she finds this manifestation, she doesn't freak out like you might have thought she would. Instead, she embraces this walking piece of goop, and their embrace quickly turns into a passionate kiss. The Outside, directed by one of the best female horror directors, Anna Lily Amirpour, had a lot of strange moments, but one in particular stands out. After she kills her cop husband, Keith, and becomes a soulless beauty queen, she uses her taxidermy skills to put her gutted and stuffed husband on the couch in front of the TV. Then she goes to work to show off her new look. The long shot of Keith's lifeless body and blank beady stare is one of the most unsettling things you'll see in the whole series. Coming up, how Thurber finds his son in Pickman's model. In Keith Thomas's adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's Pickman's model, a curator named William Thurber meets an artist whose grotesque work makes people feel evil. In the entire episode, Thurber tries desperately to avoid meeting the same fate as others who looked at the painting but he can't prevent Pickman's works from being shown at galleries. At the end of the episode, he comes home to find his wife, Rebecca, who'd seen a Pickman painting earlier, making dinner. He finds Rebecca with her eyes gouged out. But that's not the worst thing. Nope. It turns out the meal she's making is their young son, James, who's been killed. Next, when Jenkins took over Gilman's body. Dreams in the Witch House was an adaption of H.P. Lovecraft by Twilight director Catherine Hardwick. In the episode, Rupert Grint plays Walter Gilman, a man who takes a drug that lets him see his dead sister. This is another example of parasitic possession from the Cabinet of Curiosities. But Gilman's short trips to the afterlife make him the target of the ghosts of an executed witch, and Jenkins Brown, a rat with a human-like face, played by DJ Qualls. Brown gets what he wants by burrowing into Gilman's body and claiming it as his own. We had no idea that the end of this exciting ghost story would be so shocking and confusing. It, it, it might be the craziest ending of the whole series. Finally, the meteor's victim in the viewing. The episode's slow-burning story that's deliciously weird and unusually interesting. Its ending is one of the worst we've ever seen. This star-studded, mesmerizing 1970s throwback is about a group of people who all die when they are invited to see an alien artifact that holds a powerful creature. After Targ and Dr. Zara melt away, Guy's head explodes. That's when Lassiter bonds with the monster and Charlotte and Randall can escape before they fall victim to its wrath. For now, at least. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Del Toro's list of directors for the different episodes in the second season? Did the first season pack a punch with its crazy moments? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.